Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in this full stack Flutter development series. In this video, we'll be looking at integrating all aspects of our application so that the UI will now communicate with the back end and we'll also configure our app in the Google Developer Console so that we might have access to the Google sign in functionality. So let's go straight into it. And the first thing I want is for us to install this shared preferences package. Um, we'll be using this to uh, store or look or to behave or, or act as our local storage or local cache uh, for storing our token. There are more secure ways to do this and I will encourage you to look into those but for this video I'll be using the simplest way as possible. So the first thing I want to go into my cache module and to actually implement that cache uh, contract using the shared preferences package. So I'll create a file called local store. I'll create my local store class. And this class will implement the local store or I local store contract. create those two methods and for our dependency we'll use the shared preference package so shared preferences that will be injected in our controller so to our local store controller we'll inject the shared preferences As you can see here, we, we do not have access to this um, token uh, file directly from the source. We'll have to access it through the auth package that is returned. But let's just import it here. So it's coming directly from the auth package that we created. So we have a delete functionality and we have a save, a fetch functionality, but we also need to add a save functionality. So we'll go directly to our local store um, interface to add that also. So I'll quickly add that back to our local store bringing in that missing method. So for our delete method, it's pretty simple. All we'll be doing is to use the shared preference instance and simply remove whatever key that we have stored our token as. So in this case, I am going to create a const variable. And I'm gonna call it cached token. And the key will be the same. So I'll use that for the key. So here I'll say remove cache token. So the delete is pretty simple. For the fetch met method, it's also pretty simple. All we need to do is to go to our shared preference to get that particular token string. So token string, get that using the key. So shared 
shared preferences and say get string and again we'll use the same cached cached token Now that will return the token string, but what we want to return is a token. So we're gonna say if the string, if the token string is not null, then we want to return in this case a future. set the value to a new token with the token string else if nothing is there we simply return null so that's our fetch method and for the save method we simply use the shared preferences again and say set string and the key is the cached token and the value is the token dot value which is the string value itself so now we have our save method all the those method relating to our local store here um, implemented so i'm just gonna add a future void here So there we have our local store ready and going, ready to go. So now I want to configure our composer, which will be used to create the different objects, to handle our object graph and to create the different objects with all its dependencies, mainly the views and injecting all those dependencies for the particular views. So inside of our lib folder at the root where the main resides, I'm going to create another file called composition root. And here I'll do all my object composition and their dependencies. So I'm going to create a method called which will be a static method which returns a widget and I'm going to say call it compose of UI so this will be used to compose our authentication UI with all its dependencies so now what are the dependencies uh, for our auth um, UI? We need the auth API, so in this case, I auth API this would be auth API. But we do not have access to iauth api so we'll have to expose that from our inside of our auth source we'll have to export source domain auth service contract 
So we'll have to expose that now. We should have access to our IAuth API. I exported the wrong thing. So it should be source inside of our infrastructure layer API and then the API contract. And let us go ahead and also export the the API itself. So now back to our composition root, we should be able to import that and that works. Now for our dependencies, we need a base URL and we need a HTTP client. So those I'm going to configure in a global space that it will be accessible to any method within the composition root. So I'm going to set up the shared preferences also. Gonna make all these private. I'm going to set up my my local store. So I local store local store. I am going to set up my base URL. So base url which is of type string i'm going to set up my client which will be my http client import my contract then for the HTTP client, I am going to say import that from HTTP. There we have our client. So I'm also going to create a method, another method called configure. Now this method will be the first, must be called first to wire up all those globals so that the other functions can have access to those globals so my local store i'm going to create local store and this i'm going to pass in the shared preferences here i am also going to set up my client create my client here and then I'll set my base URL and in this case it will be HTTP local hosts 3000 I'm working with port 3000 so there's my configure method and this must be called before we can call any of the compose uh, methods. So now my auth API will use my base URL and also the client. Now my auth manager which will be used to create whether it's an email auth or a Google auth, I'm going to call that manager. Auth manager. And this uses the API. Now the manager itself is not here, so I'll have to go back here and export 
the manager so source managers my off manager so now we have access to our manager then our qubit our auth qubit Our auth qubit accepts local store as its dependency, and then we have our sign up service or I sign up service. Sign up service. Sign up service. And this will use the API as its dependencies dependency. So again, we do not have access to our sign up service, so we have to go here and export what we need. So adapters sign up service. No, we have access to our sign up service. So now we can go ahead and for our UI, we're gonna wrap that in a qubit provider. And we're going to use inside of our qubit provider for our create method a build context and that will give our auth qubit and then for the child we'll have our auth page and in this case we want our auth page to accept the manager and also our sign up service as it stands our auth page doesn't currently accept that but we'll modify that quickly so now inside of our main we'll go ahead and the first thing we'll do is to call the configure method so our composition root and say configure so that wires up all those uh, global infrastructure that we need and then here instead of calling auth page we'll say composition root compose our auth ui so now we have all that wired up. Now inside of our auth page, inside of the constructor, we need to accept our manager and also our sign up service. So I'm gonna say final auth manager, manager and Final I sign up service sign up service. Then for inside of our constructor, we'll accept both of those. So this manager, this sign up service. So now we'll have access to those in side of our UI. To make those necessary calls on the on the different button clicks I also want to set up inside of our auth page state some string variables that represent the data collected from the text fields so we have our username we have we have our email and we have our password and 
those will be accepted inside of our value change. So here we'll set inside of the onChange method, we're gonna say password is equal to value. So the field is being updated as the password is being typed. Same thing here, email is equal to whatever value is inside the field. And for the username inside of our sign up here, whatever value is inside the field. So username equal whatever value is inside the field. I prefer to do it that way rather than use a text editing controller that I would eventually have to dispose. So there we set up those fields so that we can capture the different values that are typed in those fields. Now, inside of our build UI, inside of our safe area, this is where we want to wrap our UI inside of our qubit consumer to handle the different states. So I am going to wrap this inside if of a qubit consumer. And the reason why I'm using consumer is because I am going to use the listener to display a snack bar of arrows and also a loader. So now inside of our builder and this consumer should be of type auth qubit and auth state. So now for our builder, we are going to say, I'm not going to use a context a state object here. I am going to say return my build UI method. So it doesn't matter what the state is, I want to build the same UI. So the difference is really inside of the listener. So inside of the listener itself, which accepts a context and also the state, Inside of the listener, I want to see, I want to check different states. So here I want to say if the state is error, so if it's an error state, then I want to show an error. So I'm going to call the scaffold pass in the context and I'm going to say show snap bar. Then for this snap bar, I'm going to create a snap bar. And for the content, content will be a text. Simple text with state, the message that is returned from the state. And I am going to style it using the current text theme that was configured. Caption copy with color being white and the font size 
gonna set that to 16. So now I'm saying if there's an arrow, I want to show a snap bar displaying those arrow. For next state, I want to say if there is, if the state is loading, so if it's a loading state, I want to show a loader. I'm going to create a method called show loader that is going to use a alert dialog to display that loading uh, circular progress bar. And for all other states, I'm going to hide the same loader. I'm going to have two methods show loader and hide loader. So for the show loader method, I'm going to create a alert. So this will be an alert dialog. I'm going to make the background Gonna make that transparent and I'm going to say I'm gonna set the elevation to zero set the content to be center widget with a as its child we'll have a circular progress bar our progress indicator that I'll give it a background color white and I give it white 70 So there is our alert. So now I'm going to call the show dialog method. And I'm going to pass it a context. I'm going to say barrier dismissible true. And for the builder, I'm going to say use my alert dialog. So there is my show dialog method. And for the hide loader method, it will simply remove the dialog from the navigation. It's a root navigator here I'm gonna pass in the context then we're gonna say pop and so that should take care of removing the dialog when the loader finishes so now let me add those methods to our button clicks to log in with email and also to log in with Google. So for our sign up button press, what we're going to do for sign up is to create a user Whenever the button is pressed, I'm going to create a user. So the name will be username, email, 
password. So that's the user. Now I'm going to say qubit provider of, and I want a provider for the auth qubit. And I'm going to use this to call the sign up method and to pass in the user and the sign of service, which can be accessed using widget, sign of service, and also the user. So this should take care of the button click for our signing up of a new user. For our next button click, which is sign in. So for sign in with Google, again, I'm gonna use the qubit provider. Auth qubit. Then I'm going to say sign in and I am going to pass it the widget manager Google and the same thing applies I'm just going to copy and paste here for the email but instead of Google I'm going to ask the manager to give me an email instance and I'm going to pass in the email and the password here. So now we have that configured. There's also a small change that I would like to make inside of our auth API. So inside of our auth API, I would like to make a small change so that if the if the server returns an array of errors, I want to transform that array into a single string separated by a new line. Um, and that single string will be returned and those errors will be displayed. Currently, as it is, if there's an array of error, then the errors wouldn't be displayed, but rather just this generic uh, server error. So I'm going to here create a private method, and I'm going to call it transform, transform error. And this method will accept a map, which is the response body. And I'm going to say the contents of the map based on what I know my backend is returning can be of type can be with a value arrow. And if that is not present present, which is a single arrow, then I can check for the key errors, which means an array of errors. So I'm gonna say if contents is of type string, that means it's a single arrow. And then I'm just going to return that. Otherwise, I am going to fold all the error messages into one string separated by new line. So, so error string will be contents. fold starting with an empty string for the method you have the previous value and the current element 
and then I'm going to say the previous element plus the element, the current element values dot first. Now this is strictly based on the fact that I know how my back end will send me errors. If I did not have that knowledge, I could not write this code like this. And then I'm going to say return error string. I'm going to trim off any extra space. So that's the method. So now inside of our response 200 method. If we get a status code that is not 200, what instead of returning a generic server error, what I'm going to do is get the response body. going to decode that using the JSON decode method. And then I'm going to say return result arrow transform arrow. So that's the method I'm going to pass in the map. So that should transform the arrow and return it as a string. Now back to our auth page. So now we have our app up and running. We want to try and start our servo. And this, we want to start our backend by running npm run dev. We should start on port 3000. Now that it is listening on port 3000, if we go ahead and try to sign in, I am expecting an error. So they are invalid. Email password is required. We are getting back those errors from our server. And as you can see, it's an array of errors, but because we formatted so that it returns a string with new line instead, the same thing goes here. Name is required, invalid email, password is required. So that is working as we expect. Now, if I try Google, then it will throw an arrow uh, saying that a Google service plist file is not found. And this is where we'll have to go into Google Developer Console and to configure our application there and to download the plist. So let us do that. So the first thing you need to do is go here console firebase google.com and you're going to add your projects yeah I already added um, my project you give it your name here and you continue But I'm not going to set it up since I already have them. Now, if I should create a project with a new name, let's see. Create project.
So after my new project is created, then I'm going to go to iOS and here I can enter the bundle ID, whatever the bundle ID of your app, whatever the name is, you can enter it here and initialize it and then after that you will get access to a google services peel google service info plist file you will download that file and i'm going to show you guys so what you're gonna do is you're going to download your google service info plist file and you are going to paste it inside of your iOS runner folder. So there we have it here. And this will have all the necessary uh, keys that, that are needed to access the Google service. Then after that, inside your info plist, you are going to create this URL types here and inside of that you are going to copy and paste your Google unique ID here. As you can see this comes from your info playlist file which is your reverse client ID. So you're gonna copy your reverse client ID and you're going to paste that here inside of your URL scheme. So that's how you get that set up. And after you have your plist files set up and everything is th there, then you need to go again to console uh, developers.google.com and you need to go to OAuth consent screen for your application and you need to select external and create. Then enter the necessary information here and click save now this will then gives authorization to access uh, things like user profile and email so after all of that is set up then the application should be ready to access google services so let us go ahead and test that so now if we should try again and we can see that it is loading and then it should bring up our Google authentication uh, form And so here we will enter our information, our email, and so on. And that will give us access to sign in with Google. So I canceled that and there we get an error. Also, if you are having issues with yours working, you can go to the Google sign-in Flutter package and they have instructions as how to get it up and running. They have all the steps here, how to register the app, including the plist file and what must be done in order for it to work. So you can always go to the Google sign-in Flutter package and follow the instructions there if it is not working but that's it for this tutorial guys as you can see things are 
looking well and working with our authentication screen. In the next set of videos, we'll begin to look at our restaurant or food module where we'll be fetching a list of restaurants and the foods associated with that. And we'll be looking at uh, pagination, that kind of thing. So this is the end of the auth module. I hope you guys have learned something. Um, remember to like and to share this video and to leave your comments. So thank you again and see you in the next one.